Hatred of our enemy can be a weapon, especially when it comes in the form of a hail of 40 millimeter grenades and exploding balls of plasma. I'm about to show y'all the true power of Stagger and how it can support your team all the way to the win. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai, and today we're going to be looking out for our fellow Helldivers by creating the breathing room that they need to send these pathetic, rusted heaps of scrap back to factory settings. There's been a ton of big changes to the game with the last patch and has opened up a whole lot of new ways to play. Instead of going through the changes line by line, I'm just going to show y'all how to use your situational awareness along with a well-planned loadout to make it through Helldive missions. Now that you know what the video is about, let's go spill some oil. Before we get into it, let's talk about our main goal for this mission, polishing up our situational awareness. Knowing the location of your teammates, the enemy, and what can be used for cover is crucial when fighting the bots, especially on Helldive. If you're new to my channel, I like to talk about how we can work with our random squad mates to bring maximum destruction to the enemies of democracy. So, we'll also be talking about how to employ team play tactics to get the most out of our game time. I assume y'all's free time is valuable, so I want to make sure you feel equipped to tackle any challenge while backing up your fellow Helldivers. With our goals established, let's take a quick look at the loadout. Here's the full kit we'll be using today. In future games, I'll be swapping out the rocket sentry for the EMS mortar, but it still does a fine job. I do want to give some special attention to the GL-21 grenade launcher. This beauty got a bit of a tune-up in the last patch, now it's pretty much launching impact grenades at those tyrannical toasters. A 50 damage bump might not seem like a lot until you find yourself suddenly wiping out entire patrols faster than an Eagle airstrike. That's why we only brought the orbital precision strike and the rocket sentry to help with heavy work. With this loadout, we are the crowd control. For our primary, we brought the plasma purifier, one of my favorite weapons against the bots. This weapon also got a much needed change and now actually has medium penetration like it's supposed to. That means it can now take out the chin guns of a factory strider or shoot a gunship right out of the sky. But the main reason we're bringing it is the weapon's fantastic range, area of effect damage, and stagger. One shot from this baby will stagger anything smaller than a hulk, making it extremely effective at pushing back the bots. Finally, let's take a quick look at the orbital precision strike. Now with only a 90 second cooldown and a 2 second call in time, this stratagem works wonders for taking out those high priority targets. It hits about as hard as the 500 kg, but is, in my opinion, easier to manage with its faster call in time and lower cooldown. Alright, now that y'all have everything you need to know, let's get into it. So you probably saw I spent the first part of this mission getting my team kind of trying to nudge him into cover because we got a big old bot drop with a whole bunch of nasty dropped right on top of our heads. So what I do is I ping a destination, click follow me, but this is the important part y'all, I keep looking back to see if my team is following me. I'm not here to bark orders at people, if they don't want to follow me then I'm going to follow them. So what I do is I try to incentivize them to follow me by pinging the next objective or the next big scary target that I see in front of me so that they have something, some kind of direction to work towards. But that doesn't mean we can't have goals of our own. Like right here, I really want to take out this heavy fabricator because it's annoying me. So I try to aggro all the bots in the area to come through this tiny little choke point so we make use of our explosive weaponry. I hear a tank off to my right, so I check out the orbital precision strike and kind of make sure it's lined up, and then I get shot in the face. Now, thankfully I'm wearing explosive resistant armor, so that didn't hurt too bad. But I managed to take out this little bot and he blows up and sets me on fire. So I have to dive desperately in here and try to just wiggle my way out. Now this is a good time to mention when you're when after you've stemmed, you're pretty much invincible for the duration of the stem. Now you can something big enough can still take you out, but those little bots trying to chop me to pieces, they never stood a chance. Now I couldn't take out that tank from that angle, but I did see that orbital laser get called in. This means I have some backup. So I can play a little bit slower and kind of wait for my team to push up before I make any more sudden moves. I hold this position down and I see the stratagem start to get called in. So I know my team's going to be able to handle these big objectives like those towers and the fabricators. I don't really need to worry about them too much. I can just kind of keep my eye out, you know, head on a swivel, looking around. Uh, I do see this one fabricator somehow survive the Eagle airstrike, so I'm going to take that out real quick. But importantly, most of the team is here. The only person that's not in the immediate area is R2, and that's because he's going over there to take out a stratagem jammer. But you'll see that P3 and K4, they're nearby, so we kind of stick together as a unit and we push towards R2. This is kind of just mutual cooperation where we don't really need to communicate this, we just do it. It's super useful, y'all. Like, it's okay to walk, uh, wander off on your own occasionally, but... 
you really should be sticking near your team. And what that means is you always want to be within running distance of the rest of your squad mates because you never know when you're going to need that backup. You never know when you're going to have a whole bunch of samples on you and just get whacked by something random. Being by your team is a huge insurance policy that lets you kind of play more aggressively. It lets you just take on bigger challenges because you have four people fighting at one direction rather than just one person trying to take on the world. Like right here, R2 split off on their own, took out a stratagem jammer, but then they called for supplies, so we called in that resupply, we grouped up, and now we're moving as a unit. We have purpose and we're all moving together. So what's going to happen here is some interesting things with pings. Somebody pings uh, direction, I just look where it is, ping the affirmative, rest of the team follow suit, and now we all know we're in the same boat. Since we're working together, we can start employing some tactics, and this one's called talking guns. So right here I see K4 laying down that fire, but then he stops and starts to move. So that means it's my turn to step up and start putting rounds down range. And I'm going to keep doing this until I hear K4 start shooting again. Once I hear him start firing, I'm moving to the next piece of cover, just walking right up behind him. This just little coordination, it doesn't require any communication, doesn't even require you to know what you're doing. You just gotta work off of your teammates to make it happen. Now here, R2 is pushed up a little bit too far and he's getting chased by two hulks. Actually, there's three, there's one more in the distance there. So I need to start helping him out. I stun one of them, take that one out of the equation, and then I start shooting the other, but then these lasers start going across my face. Now, I don't like to dip too deep into the more gamey parts of, you know, playing these games. But there's a little trick I know, and that's that in most shooters, enemies are coded so that they will not hit you on their first few shots. That's why you saw just a barrage of lasers come at my face, but nothing really hit me. That gave me enough time to jump out of the way, because I knew if I'd stayed just a half second longer, I'd have gotten cut in half. So just kind of knowing these little tricks, sometimes it can be useful. I tend to stay away from them, because... Well, y'all, I'm a bit more of a role player than that, but that is one tip that I always like to use, and it really saves my life quite frequently. But after recovering from that death and taking out that tank that killed me, I'm gonna grab up my stuff and follow my team to wherever they want to go next. I'm in the rear, so I'm following them. I'm not gonna dictate nothing to them as long as I'm, you know, the one in the back. If y'all have been liking watching me work together with my team, then consider liking the video. That one click helps me out a lot by encouraging the voting algorithm to spread the word of cooperation and team play. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. My greatest aspiration is to show the Helldiving community how to work together to achieve our goals. If we cover each other's backs, we can kick the enemies of managed democracy straight out of our galaxy. To get back into it, you're about to see an example of what happens when you tunnel vision too hard on destroying the enemies and don't pay enough attention to where your team is. So as you can see here, three of us are all firing right at this bottleneck as all the bots that were in this outpost and nearby patrol wandered on through. And this is a great field of fire. We're, we're able to take this out real easy because we can't really be shot and the bot corpses are just piling up making a bit of a wall. But because I get a little too tunnel visioned on finishing off every last enemy that was appearing here, I didn't notice the rest of my team is, well, they're gone, y'all. So I run up here to try to take out the remaining few enemies, but this is a mistake. I really don't need to take out these devastators. They, they weren't going to hurt us. They're on the other side of a wall, and we created a beautiful barrier of their corpses to block them from following us. So it'd be very easy for me to just turn around and leave, which is what I really should have done. I only get jogged out of it once I see that R2 has died, and then I hear them, my other teammates, calling the reinforcement, and I know that, oh crap, I'm nowhere near anybody. I need to go regroup. But this is where I start paying for that mistake. There was a bot drop called in, and it had a factory strider with it. So I'm kind of stuck by behind this rock. The only reason I'm not moving is I hear my other two teammates behind me covering me, and, you know, they're, they're shooting at stuff. So my thought process is that I need to hold these bots attention while I can't really move anyway and have them shooting at me so my team can finish off whatever they're dealing with. But this tank is way too close for comfort and I know if it rounds that corner I'm just gonna die. There's no, no way I'll survive. So I just have to run for it and hope I don't get gunned down in the process. I duck behind this tiny little wall because I know that this is hard cover, it can't really be destroyed. And I try taking out the chin guns of the factory strider with the grenade launcher, but I don't think it works. This is just something I learned while I was playing this. I, I haven't played with the grenade launcher a lot, but since the new patch buffed it, it's really freaking good. And I just, I'm in the process of learning how all the 
tips and tricks. So if you know anything about the grenade launcher that you'd like to see me do or that I haven't been doing, please leave it in the comments. I'm always trying to improve and I really don't have an ego with this kind of thing. But I hope you all can see how this whole situation really started from me not moving with my team fast enough. If I had moved with them when they left, we probably wouldn't have even aggroed this factory strider. We wouldn't have to deal with it. But because I stayed behind, it got aggroed onto me, started following us, and then it just kind of led to this train of enemies making our life a lot harder. Here's another example of the bloodlust getting the better of me. My teammate pings out this Hulk, so I assume that that means he wants me to deal with it. And I go over to deal with these fabricators of the orbital precision strike, but I see that bot drop called in, and I don't think to myself, where's my team? Until just now, I see like, oh, I'm by myself. This is really bad. But because there's a lot of open landscape behind me, and I know that these enemies are all targeting me right now, I don't feel comfortable just running straight to my teammate over there. Instead, I try to do a little bit of a loop, drop ships come in, I deal with what I can, as soon as I see that factory strider, I'm out of there, y'all. I'm not, I'm basically in the open. I'm not near my teammates. And it looks like P3 over here is having a little bit of trouble. So I'm gonna go help him out. This won't always be true, but I really do feel like in my games, when I support my team in this way, like P3's gonna notice, oh, somebody's shooting the things that are shooting me. And I feel like that really encourages the cooperation. So if some of y'all are wondering like, oh, but you know, I get garbage teammates. I, th I really do think it's your responsibility to help your teammates be good. And what I mean by that is when you're working with them, you can do a lot more. So helping them out makes them want to help you out, at least from what I can tell. So P3 and I are split off from the other two teammates, and we need to kind of fight our way through this because we're kind of in the open and there's a lot of enemies in front of us. So we don't really have much of an option if we want to regroup with our team. we got to kind of fight through it. But while y'all are watching this, I want you to remember what I said about talking guns, and I want you to see how I'm using my pings. I'm pinging out the targets that I can't destroy so that my teammate, who I know can, can take them out. But I'm just going to let y'all watch the rest of this little fight, and then we'll pick back up when it's done. With that tank dead, P3 and I have a chance to go regroup with our team. And I can see in the distance, the only thing between us really is this one very hurt factory strider. So I do not want to be in the open because I see this thing turning and if those machine guns on its chin are able to target me, it's going to just cut me in half immediately. So before I even throw a stratagem, make sure you get behind some hard cover. And I'm in a good spot to hit this with the orbital precision strike, so I throw it out. And once this thing is dead, we're going to be able to go back, regroup with our team, and go finish the mission off. We start heading together towards the primary objective, but I do notice that two of my teammates are really low health and they're not stemming. And then they start calling for supplies. So since I have a supply backpack, I'm going to go do my supporty roll, stem him up, resupply him, and then we can move again as a unit to the next objective. And as you can see, it makes your teammates happy when you do this kind of stuff. Just knowing that your team actually has your back can make a big difference when you're playing, especially in the mentality of the people you're playing with. This is another good example of situational awareness and how it works, because I saw that bot drop got called in, and if I look at the terrain around me, we're, we're kind of hemmed in. We're not really able to push through this without having the bot drop come in behind us. So, like smart hell divers, we all kind of sit up against the wall, we call down our stratagems, and we just brace for impact. We start throwing the orbital lasers. I tossed out the rocket sentry earlier. And between the stuns, the orbital lasers, and the rocket sentry, we take out this thing without any problem because we have our entire kits to bring to bear against the enemy at the same time. Now, I hadn't been showing y'all much of the primary because I really wanted to focus on how we coordinate and basically how I make my random squad mates want to work with me. So that's been the focus up to this point. But now we're going to talk a little bit more about tactics. Here we're at the final stage of launching the nuke, and we have the patrols and stuff coming in as the missile gets ready to fuel and launch and that kind of stuff. My teammates chunk out the EMS mortar, and I have a plasma purifier, which is pretty darn accurate, has explosive damage, and a lot of ammo, honestly. 
So I'm able to use this EMS mortar and my own stun grenades, along with my pings, to kind of hold this entire push back pretty much by myself letting my teammates just give me that little bit of fire support for those heavier targets. And this is what our loadout is just really effective at, just keeping the bots just at arm's length, pushing them back and using our grenade launcher to wipe out big groups of enemies. Just think of it like an eagle airstrike that you carry on your back. And the purifier lets us just keep the bots staggered and in place so that our team can deal with them. That's kind of the, the idea behind the loadout and how it works. We're kind of like a medium to long range engagement. You know, if we shoot too close, we're going to blow ourselves up. So we do want to keep that distance. And the primary that we chose and the support weapon are just very conducive to that. But with the missile launched, it's time to get the heck out of here. So we're all moving together. Again, I'm going to keep repeating this, y'all, because it really does matter when you move together. You're just more effective, and it also kind of encourages people to stay together. If everybody wanders off on their own, then it encourages other people to do it as well. But we're fighting our way through this little outpost. Probably didn't super need to. Bot drop gets called in. And we're just kind of deciding where to go from here. This is another example of my situational awareness kind of failing me at this moment. I got caught up in wanting to destroy all the bots because I have a burning hatred for them. And I just didn't register to me that the bot drop was going to be dropped right on top of my head. So I start firing at them with the plasma purifier, but this is quickly getting out of hand and we just need to get the heck off this planet at this point so there's really no reason to fight. R2 gives the excellent suggestion of run so I give him the affirmative and I start hauling ass towards the extraction point because there's really no reason to fight this and I'm kind of on my own again. But thankfully because my teammates also have the spirit of cooperation in them, one of them tosses out a eagle smoke strike to kind of cover my retreat because they saw I was too far away. Like you can see the rest of my team they're fine they didn't throw that for themselves they threw that for me. So I give them the thank you and they give me, you know, the thumbs up, you know, so that kind of confirmed my suspicion that they were just helping me out. And we make our way to the extraction. I cut out most of the extraction just because there's a whole lot of nothing happening because the terrain around this extraction point combined with our high ground and EMS mortars just made it so the bots didn't really want to mess with us. But I did want to show you all this brief clip of me shooting over the cover with the grenade launcher. This is something unique to this weapon as far as I can tell and it's just very effective. You don't put yourself in danger and you put a lot of firepower downrange. Well y'all, that's the run. I hope you've enjoyed it. Nothing else really happened. The teammates just kept throwing down the smoke strikes and the bots left us alone so we could hop on Pelican 1 in peace. I hope y'all have enjoyed this, but I did want to mention that because there's so many new loadouts with the patch, I can't really cover them all in this current format of video. So in the future, I'm going to be dropping a few just gameplay commentaries for y'all so I can talk more easily about what kind of weapon combinations are good, what support weapons are better, that kind of stuff. I also figured y'all might like seeing me do these kind of team play things in real time rather than with the benefit of hindsight. I do play all my Helldive missions like this. I play around my team. I make loadouts to support my team. I just like the feeling of working together to accomplish a goal, so that's how I play. But if y'all want to see me do that in real time, stay tuned for the next one. Until then, Commissar Kai, signing out.